I see Ruchi Bhairavi K online. Can you share a bit about yourself, where you're from and what program do you plan to launch? Why are you interested in this launch? Okay, Ruchi says I'm a life coach from Singapore. Okay, and what do you plan to launch? K from the Gold Coast. Online courses for health professionals, interesting. Let's just give it a few minutes, ladies, so the others can join in and then we'll start. Basically, this program is, or this free training series is designed to help you understand the basics of launching and getting your foundations in place, okay? Are you guys up for that? Okay, Richie says her course is on journaling, teaching how to use journaling as a manifesting tool. Interesting. Yes. Okay. So you know what? Let's go ahead and start and other peeps can join in as, or as and when they join in. This training series, now I've been helping clients with their launches one-on-one -on -one for quite some time. And I've done at least a dozen courses about launching. Okay. But I'm always, I always get, uh, go all over the place when it comes to my own launches, right? And I understand how difficult it is because launching feels like, you know, there are, it feels like putting together a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle in an earthquake. There are so many pieces. There is uh, the lead generation, a webinar, a challenge, the emails, the posts, the you know, there's just so much to be done when you are launching. And I wanted to make it, I want to put together a structure to make it simpler for those who are ready to launch their next course or program, but aren't quite yet ready for, you know, one-on-one -on -one support because my one-on-one -on -one work is very high end. So I wanted to still reach out and help more people, help more women in particular launch their courses. Hence this series. Okay, so let's get started. This is how the next, this is what we'll cover in the next one hour. I'll start with quick introduction so that you get to know me a bit because I see quite a few new, few new faces on this webinar. I will talk a bit about how this program will roll, this free eight day series. I will talk a bit about the most common mistakes and how to avoid them. It's important to know it's important to uh, know where people stumble so that you can learn from their mistakes. I'll talk about my favorite thing, pizza, which is like, ah, oh, the best, okay? We'll cover the phases, the different phases of your launch, the launch terms, and then I will help you create a launch blueprint. At the end of this program, I will also share with you a very, very special offer for those of you who want to take things a bit further and want to go in depth into this stuff. Okay. Are you guys on board with this plan? Please give me a yes or a no in the chat box. My webinars or my training sessions, the reason I do them live instead of just pre-recording a video is so that I can keep it interactive so that I can answer your questions, etc., as they come along. And Overall, you know, I want to keep it as a conversation as if we were doing this in person, face to face, because that's when people really learn. Otherwise, it's just video that you're listening to while you're cooking or watching TV or something else. Right. So let's move on. In case you don't know me, my name is Richard Jen and I'm an online business strategist. In the past, I've worn many hats. I've been a web developer. I've been a copywriter. And for over 13 years, I was in the semiconductor software industry, writing code, managing teams, and doing all of that high-tech stuff. I quit in 2014 to start my own business. And these days, I help women like you create their online business to create more impact, sign up more clients, and make more money doing the work that you love. I believe in combining your passion, your purpose to generate profit. I believe that purpose and profit go hand in hand 
unlike some who believe they cannot make profit doing work that they love. I believe very strongly in keeping things simple. Okay. All of my programs, all of my webinars, all of my one-on-one -on -one work, I will ask you to break things down to the simplest possible and focus on the simplest things because that is what brings true growth. When you cut out the extras, when you cut out the distractions and focus on the basics. My style of working is based on flow, not hustle, and that is what I help clients achieve. Into making connections, being of service, rather than just blah, 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 marketing and sales. That's what I believe in. That sales result from connections and conversations. Okay? So if any of that scares you off or puts you off or is not the kind of person you want to learn from or be working in, with, please feel free to drop off, no offense taken. And the kind of people that I like to work with and the kind of people who benefit most from my work are women entrepreneurs who are passion-based, who are creating a passion-based business, who are driven by a purpose that is beyond themselves and beyond money, who want to help more people. And for those of you on this particular webinar, you want to help more people through your courses and your programs, okay? So how we'll roll over the next eight days. We're going to have three live training sessions via Zoom. The first one today is going to be about launch strategy. The second one on Monday at the same time is going to be about sales pages. And the third session next Thursday at the same time is going to be about creating your marketing content. Okay, so I've broken it up into three sessions because honestly, there is there's so much to share and discuss and do about launches. So I've broken it up into three sessions so that you get to focus on each bit. Okay. In between these three live training sessions, there will be, I will be doing live Q and A sessions on my Facebook page, except on Sunday. And I will send you daily action items, daily small to do's over email. So a learning session is going to be jam packed, but then the actions you take, after our webinar, after our class, are going to be daily, small steps daily. And to catch the replay, to get your action items, the links, etc., you can go over to this link anytime, therichardjane.com slash LS replay. I've also mentioned that in the emails that I've shared with you. Now, one minute, let me quickly share what it looks like. Uh, Okay, can you see my new screen? Hmm. Can you see the new screen now? Okay, this is the page I told you about. I'll also share the link in the chat box. Please save it. It's also there in email. You'll find here the link to a Zoom page, uh, to a Zoom for every live webinar, a link to my Facebook page where I'll have the live Q&A sessions and once the session is done, I'll be putting up the replays over here. Okay. So this is the page that you track during the course of this one week to make sure while you're staying along. Questions so far about this page? Yep, let's hop back. Okay, so that's how we'll roll during this next one week. Now let's get started with the juice or the meat of today's session. Now, a lot of people don't like talking about mistakes, but I believe it's really important to do so because you get to learn from other people's mistakes, right? So that you don't have to do them yourselves. Now, in my time observing online launches way back from like 2010, this is what I've seen the key mistakes are, okay? The first most common thing or the most common thing is that the expectation that you can just make it and they will come. That you make the course, you focus on making the course and make it so great, so amazing, so powerful that people will just flock to it. And uh, I've seen people spend hun hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars creating the perfect videos, creating the perfect script, putting it up on a nice platform and then no one buys the course, 
Now that, that is totally heartbreaking. And it's simple, if people do not know about your course, they can't buy it, they can't sign up, okay? So it's not just about making an awesome course, you also have to market it, remember that. Some people, okay, most people don't like marketing and sales, but if you really want to make an impact, you have to market your course. And that, that's what this entire program, the, smart, the Launch Smart series is about, okay? The second most common mistake is to expect that you can make money while you sleep. Now, this is a myth that's propagated by lots of internet marketing gurus who, you know, who will show you screenshots of their PayPal or their bank account and this money came in while I was on holiday. This money came in while I was sleeping. What they forget to tell you is that in order for that to happen, they spent the last three years or five years building up an audience, creating an email list, putting out course after course after course and a whole lot of other stuff to get to the stage where that happens. And I want to remind you that there's no such thing as passive income. Even after you create a course, you will have to either keep launching it or set it up with an evergreen funnel or something of that sort to continue driving traffic to it, to make sure that people know that it exists and to make sure that people keep signing up to it. Agreed, disagreed. Have any of you fallen for this myth that, you know, you can make money while you sleep or it'll just happen on autopilot? Or have any of you gone ahead and created a course and put it up there and experienced that, you know what, it's not enough, it doesn't, or felt that pain of knowing that you created such an awesome course and uh, well, no one's signing up for it. Been there? I have. <laughs> Okay, so and the, third, the third most common mistake is creating a course around what you want to teach versus what your people, what your audience, what your target market really wants. Especially, this happens especially if you are an expert in a particular field and you've been doing this work for so long and you know people can benefit from your work and you're dying to share your message, your work with the world. Right? So you go and create a course about it. Not quite keeping in mind what your audience, what your target market really wants. Okay? You have to remember, it's not about you. It's not about the features that are packed into your course. It's not about how many videos there are. It's not about how many modules there are. The only thing that matters is the results. What kind of results? Can your course or program help people achieve? That's what matters. That's what people care about. Not the number of videos, not the hours of, uh, what do you say, calls and things like that. It's about the results. What results can you promise them? What results can you deliver for them? Not just promise, but deliver. Always, always keep that in mind and build a course around that, around what they want. Okay? Now, I could have created a course about how to create the best video or how to create how to create a course but i created something about launching because when i asked around when i asked my target market when i asked my people what's been the trickiest part of taking their course online and that's what people told me that it was about creating the right launch strategy and their marketing content those were the top two contenders okay that's why i am running this series now, so now that you know the three most common mistakes and hopefully you'll remember them and not stumble into that. What is, you know, there is one very simple master key to keep to remembering this stuff and doing it right. It's just, it's just one thing to making sure you ace your launch or you rock your launch totally. It's just one thing, any guesses? You, you guys have been following the online business world for a while. Any guesses about what it could be? Please share in the chat box. What do you think is the secret sauce or the secret recipe or the secret key to acing your launch? 
No takers? Okay, you know what? I'll go ahead and share it because it's just one thing. And I think the best way to explain it is something that I definitely love and you probably do too. It's the humble pizza. If you've heard, if you've seen some of my uh, earlier posts or webinars, I talk about pizza a lot because I think pizza holds the answer to everything, including to launching your course successfully. So what's the pizza rule and what does it have to do with launches? Now imagine you're having a party with friends and you've, you have some beer and everyone wants pizza because pizza and beer go really well together. But instead of ordering beer, oh, instead of ordering a pizza, you order a nice healthy Caesar salad. And you put in some feta cheese and some olives. And you hand pass around that bowl of big bowl of salad while everyone's sipping beer. What do you think will happen? How many people do you think will dig into that salad? Any, come on, please, please keep sharing in the comment. This is, uh, I want this to be interactive. Yep, everyone says zero, exactly. Because they're having a beer, they're in a celebratory mode, and they want pizza to go with their beer. And here you are giving them healthy salad because Hey, salad is good for you, right? The same thing when it comes to launching your courses. It's the same thing, is the same principle when it comes to creating your marketing content. If your course and if your marketing content are all about what you think is good for people, you're not gonna have too many takers. You have to, have to give them what they want. And you can bundle in what they need. For example, when my son was younger, at around five or six year old, he, there was this period when he wanted pizza every single day. And as a mom, I don't want to feed him pizza every day. I know it's not healthy. It's not good for his body. So what did I do? I would make, instead of ordering pizza from outside, I would create a thin crust pizza at home. I would make a really thin crust, chop up the vegetables really, really fine, put in a nice thick layer of the veggies, cover it with cheese so that he doesn't see the veggies and the cheese oozes into the veggies. And I have a nice thin crust pizza, which is very healthy because I've put in a lot of veggies and he gets his pizza, I get to give him veggies. Do you see the, do you see the trick here? It's not about tricking your clients or your students really, but it's about giving them what they want instead of shoving what you think they need down their throat. And if you get that right in your marketing, in your course itself, then th that is all that it really takes, okay? Any questions about the pizza rule? Do you like it, do you not like it? I love the pizza rule. Okay, so the next thing then comes up, the next question that comes up, how do you get to know your target market that well? to know what they want and how do you bundle in what they need, okay? So uh, I take all of my one-on-one -on -one clients through this exercise, even those who have launched before, even those who have, uh, I had one client who had a multiple six-figure business and her launches on an average, she had low-key launches, but they made 30 to 40K per launch. And she came to me when she had already done a good eight, 10 launches and we were supposed to fine tune her work. And I started off with the same thing, making her write down the foundations. Who is her target market? What is it that they want? Why they want it, everything. And the first session she was like, why are you making me do this? I have launched this program before I know it. And by the end of our time together, this document that we had created became the foundation of all of her marketing material. Every time she needed to create a new post, a Facebook post or an email or something else, she would come back to this document, copy paste some snippets, and she was good to go. And then she understood the, you know, the advantage of having something like this. So question for you is, how well do you know your target market? A lot of people think they know this in their head, but it makes a difference when you sit down and write it. So one of the exercises I'm gonna ask you to do after this call, and I will send you a workbook on how to do it, is make you write down this foundation. Who is your target market? 
what do they want in their own terms, not how you think. I see Dawn is here. Now, Dawn, uh, are you okay if I share your example about human design? Can you give me a yes if you're comfortable with me sharing an example from some of your work or some of the offer reviews I've done? Thank you so much, Dawn. Um, so, for example, Dawn uh, does human design readings for people. She helps people understand other people and their interactions with other people through the power of human design. And uh, her offers were along the lines of, I can help you figure out XYZ, sign up for my session. Or I can help you improve your relationships, sign up for my sessions. Now the problem with just that is, that's not really what people want, okay? People don't want to just understand, they want solutions. They want, if it's about relationships, they want to feel, uh, they want something that will not just help them understand their spouse, but will help them create a certain kind of environment at home or have their spouse respect them and share with them and talk with them or love them and respect them and those kind of things. That is what they want. Now, when you include that in your offer, when you include that in your course or program, what they really, really want, that that is the game changer for them. And they see that, yes, she's not just selling something superficial, but this is what I really want. She, she's getting inside my head. She knows what I want. She can give me what I, she can help me achieve what I want. And that's why it's important to write this down, not from your perspective, but from your target market's perspective. What they want and why they want it. For example, if you're a weight loss coach and you keep talking about lose five kilos, that's great. Yes, everyone wants to lose five kilos, but why do they really want it? So for women, it's mostly around, they want to feel young again. They want to feel comfortable in their bodies. They want to feel sexy again. They want to feel desired. They want that attention that comes with looking good and feeling good. And when you can tap into that, when you can say, hey, you know what? I understand that that's why you want to lose weight. And while I will help you lose that five kilos, I will also help you feel better about, learn to feel better about your body. Then you're going beyond what everyone else in your niche is offering, okay? To tap into how they're feeling and how they want to feel. Now, a lot of you would have joined, signed up for this program, this free training series, because you're feeling confused and overwhelmed about your launch or how to create a marketing plan and how to launch your course and how do you want to feel you want to be given 10 steps or preferably just five steps do this then this then this then this and bam your launch is done right that's how you want to feel yes or no yes or no please share in the chat box okay and you have to write down why your course or program is the best to help them and it's not because you have a degree in XYZ or that you've done this work for 10 years. It is because you have had other people achieve this before because you've, you've either walked the path, you've been there, done that, or you've helped other people walk that path. Okay, That is always the core of it. People want to know that you have the experience to help them through it. Make sense? So this is the foundation stuff. We are going to revisit it towards the end. I'm going to walk you through uh, the terms and the strategies. And then I will show you a workbook, which I will share with you later for you to fill this stuff up. Okay. All good so far. Any questions on this stuff? While you think of questions, let me just quickly bring some water. Hey, Christian. Nice to see you here. I thought you were still holidaying in Europe. Okay, let's go on. Okay, so that is the foundation of your launch. Things you need to know before you create your course, before you start even thinking about a launch. Sit down, write them out. Okay. Now let's move over to different phases of a launch. 
more often than not, people just jump into a launch and try to do things on the fly. And what happens then is that you're sitting in front of Facebook and you're wondering, okay, what should I write now? What should I post now? What should I email now? And you end up then scrolling through Facebook and waste a few hours, right? So instead, you need to be prepared. These are the four phases that you need to be aware of. It starts much, much, much before you create your course or even think or even plan out your launch details or the course details. I call the first phase actually the pre-launch buzz. Start talking about what you're thinking of. I'm thinking of creating a course on these lines. What do you guys think? Would any of you be interested? Or I'm thinking of creating X, Y, Z. What else would you like to see in it? Start using your social media to create that buzz. And it's not just for the hype factor, but it serves a couple of purposes. It lets people know what's coming up with you. So the people who follow you, the people who uh, like your work, right? They'll get an ink like, oh, she's coming up with this. Let me pay attention or to start saving up for it. I have clients uh, who save up for like six months or a year to work with me. Then, so it's so that people get to know what's coming up and they can prepare for it. And for you, it serves as market research. It gives you validation. Is your idea really, are you on track or not? Is this something that people are interested in or not? It helps you fine tune things. So use that phase. Don't be afraid. Don't be embarrassed of asking people what they want. Before I created this series, I went out and I asked people, what do you want? What do you need? What do you want to see from me? Okay. And then I created this as well as the launch bootcamp, which I'm going to talk about later. I came up with this stuff because people said they wanted it. And uh, to give you a contrast, uh, back in 2015, my first freebie was a PDF describing how SEO works. Okay, a 20 page PDF describing SEO. And while a lot of people, because uh, in those days I used to do internet marketing and web design, and I knew people did not understand SEO that well and that they need SEO. But I didn't ask them. It was something I was familiar with. I created a PDF, put it out there. And you know what? While a lot of people signed up for the PDF, none of those who signed up have actually ever took action on it and none of them ever became my clients. Duh. Right? So it's not about pushing out what you want people to give people. Ask them. This is a great phase for market research. Ask them what they want from you as the expert. Okay? The second is the list building stage or the lead generation stage. So you've confirmed that people want, say X, I'm going to use X as your course, okay? So people want your, the thing that you're planning. And the next is you have to go out and connect with the people who actually want it. Not just uh, have them comment on Facebook, but actually start collecting their email addresses so that you can engage with them. So that, phase, that is the lead generation phase. This is what people use PDFs and webinar and challenges for. And we'll talk more about how to do this in, the next, uh, in one of the next slides. But this is phase two, actually collecting email addresses to of engaged, of warm, of warm leads. Warm leads meaning people who are interested in that kind of course or program, okay? The third part is once you open cart and you offer some kind of early bird, most people in the online business space offer an early bird discount. So it would be a hundred or $200 or some, or even, you know, $10. If you have a $97 product, then $10 off of the full price. People keep the early bird open for a few days and it's just to incentivize early buyers so when people buy an early or those who buy in early you can reach out to them for quick feedback or testimonials or something along the lines of what made you buy why did you sign up for this program and then use it for further marketing right early but also serves as proof of concept that yes people are willing to buy your course or program at that price point 
And the final stage is the full price stage, where you say, okay, the early bird discount is open, and now I have my card open for everyone, and come and sign up. This is the final stage, this is the final push. A lot of, um, in the online business space, people often offer bonuses, special bonuses or disappearing bonuses during this time to again incentivize people to buy in. Okay, so those were the four phases. Have you seen people use these phases while launching? Have you ever thought of your own launch in this way? Or any questions about this? Share it in the comments. And I'm going to take that to drink some water. Yes, I drink a lot of water. Okay, someone give me a thumbs up so I know I'm not talking to myself and I'm still online. Okay, so Christiane says, yes, most people use this. Dawn says she hasn't used it. So whether you've used it or not, I'd like you to know, I, I want you to know about these four stages. You can decide, none of this is uh, set in stone, okay? But these are the most pre-launch you should definitely have. Connecting, list building, you definitely need to do. You can choose to skip early bird if you so want. It's not essential, but it's a good, it's a good way to get the momentum going. Okay. And of course, this you need to have. So you can choose to have three or four stages, but these are the four stages and it's good to be aware of them. Okay. Now, how do you make all of this happen? The list building especially, because that is the crux of it all. A launch is all about list building and making sure what you present your program to warm leads. Do you guys understand what warm leads is? Yep. Okay. So understanding that every launch has those three or four phases, I want you to get the concept of launch triggers. Now people often say you need a webinar or you need a challenge or you need something else to do your launch. It's not about, okay, before we go ahead, I see Ruchi has a question. Course is planned for 198, but I will offer it at my webinar. So that's where she plans an early bird. What price do you suggest for early bird? Okay, Ruchi, I don't know exactly what your course is or how uh, involved it is, but if you're having a full price of 198, I would suggest you shift change that to 197 because that's what people are used to and keep an early bird for 147. Keep it open for a day or two. Uh, depending on your launch period, again, I don't know what your launch period is. Keep it open for a day or two. Now, which brings us to a good point. How long should your card be open? Some, there is again no hard and fast rule for how long you should have early bird or how long you should keep your cart open. Some, the thing is that while cart is open, you are going to be on a roller coaster ride. Go, you know, every day you're going to get online and wonder how many people sign up, how many people signed up. And every time you have to post something on Facebook or send out an email, you're going to be, my God, oh my God. And it doesn't matter how experienced you are or whether you're new. Every single person who launches goes through that roller coaster. So while deciding how long you're going to keep cart open or how long you're going to have your early bird open, keep that in mind. Do what works for you. Some big name internet marketers keep their cart open for just two or three days. Day one will be an early bird and day two and three will be a full price. But when you have cart open for just three days, that means you have to spend a lot of time and energy in this stage and make sure you have a large list of warm leads who are eagerly waiting for it. You know, it's like opening the doors to a dam. You open the door and they flood through, right? That works. So if you can generate that kind of buzz and build up a good list, build up that interest in your course, you can keep cart open for a shorter time. I personally like to keep cart open for seven to 10 days because I don't use a lot of Facebook ads, et cetera, to build my list. It's mostly organic for me still, okay? For those of you who are doing things that way, who are still using organic techniques to build your list and generate that buzz, 
You can keep your cart open from anywhere from seven days to I've seen people keep their cart open for four weeks or four to six weeks. For me personally, I don't think that's doable. I cannot sustain the energy or the suspense of keeping cart open for six weeks. I cannot keep that energy going. Six weeks, you would, uh, when people keep cart open for that long, I see them running two webinars, a webinar to open cart and a webinar to close early bird. Okay, so they'd have a webinar two or three weeks apart and use that two or three weeks in between to generate that buzz. But that model doesn't work for me personally and it takes a whole lot of work for a single launch. I prefer quicker launches. I spend three to four weeks building up the leads and then I keep cart open for one week. Okay. Okay, so now when we're talking about cart open and close, I want you to be aware of there are certain triggers where people buy. 90% of the times people buy at one of the, these three touch points. When you just open cart or when you're closing early bird and third, when you close cart. 90% of sales come in in this period. So even if you have your cart open for five weeks or four weeks, you're going to see a flurry of activity at cart open at early bird close and at cart close. And there is like, there, you're gonna see a lull period in between. You might even get zero signups in between. There is a lot of statistics out there that prove or show this. Internet marketing gurus have published a whole lot of stats that show sometimes as much as 80 or 90% of sales can come in in the last 24 hours at cart close. And for me, Every single time I've launched my boot camps, I have at least two or three women reach out to me just after cart close and say, Richard, I want to join in now. And it's really simply because that's how human psychology works. Cart open, people who buy on cart open are early adopters who are willing and eager to try new stuff or who believe who, who have already worked with you somehow and believe that you can help them achieve that result that they want, okay? So those are the people who usually buy at cart open. Early bird close, people who are on the fence, who kind of want, who kind of know that they want in, but that trigger that cart is closing, uh, that early bird discount is going away, triggers them to actually purchase. And cart close is those kind of people usually who, have been trying to make up their mind, have been trying to tell themselves, no, I don't need it, maybe I don't need it, maybe I should do it, maybe, 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 maybe. And when they see that cart closing, they're like, you know what, I don't wanna wait anymore, I'm jumping in. That's human psychology, that's the way we work. There is no right or wrong, there's no good or bad, but anyone who will share launch stats with you will tell you that these are the triggers. Okay, Christian says, I can't use these triggers because I only take people, eight people into my group trainings. Yep. So Christian, for you, you may not have an early bird or you may not have a cart close, but at this, your cart open is still there. The day you open registrations, you start getting inquiries and people start asking you and people start signing up, right? So you have a cart open. Card close for you is when you have those eight people or a certain date. For example, if you've said that you're going to start on 1st of October and you have only six people signed up, your card will still close on 1st of October because you know, you're starting the program. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Christian runs live group programs. So a, a smaller group programs with a max of eight people. So you can, when you get, you can still apply this in principle to your program, even if it's a small group, but you'd want to do this more when you are launching to a larger audience where you're taking, you know, when you're running a course and launching it to a larger audience. Okay. Questions on this, anyone? Sorry, it's the afternoon here. It's a hot afternoon and I'm my throat is going dry. Okay, so let's move on. So how do you, now that you know that those are the times or trigger points where people purchase, 
how do you make that happen or how do you make sure that you connect with them at those times? That is what all of this stuff is for. The PDFs, the download, the video series, the webinars, the challenges, that is what people use to create those launch triggers. So Christian, for example, I remember you ran a challenge. The start of your challenge, when you started announcing that I'm going to be running this group program, that is your cart open, right? So the reason people do this is, uh, do this, that is give out a freebie or run a webinar for cart open or to announce the opening of their program is so that they can get that face-to-face, -face, preferably contact with people, is so that they can build that engagement, get people excited to look forward to something. And when once they're there and they get that something that makes them very happy, then you tell them about your course or program. And because they're so happy with what you've already shared with them, they sign up. That's the psychology behind it. Now you may or may not consciously be using that, but that's the reason People do webinars and challenges and video series, okay? If this is the first time you're launching and you're not yet comfortable with a webinar, for example, you can create a simple PDF, a simple ebook of some sort and give that away to build your list. And after people download your ebook, you can say, I'm gonna start this program in so-and-so date. Are you interested? Here's how to sign up. So you don't have this live conversation with them, but you have the conversation over your email series. Uh, and again, there is a science on how to write that email series, which we'll cover next Thursday. Or you can create an audio download or a meditation of some sort. Or a very popular launch trigger is a three-part video series, which was popularized by a certain, I should not mention his name, right? <laughs> Because I'm not a big fan of three-part video series, specifically the way it's done. Because again, you're sending out that video to people, you're sharing bits of information, and then you're inviting them to join your program. But there is no one-on-one -on -one contact. Here I'm teaching you live. We have an engagement. We have a conversation going. So you get to know my way of teaching. You get to know me as a person. And then that helps you decide whether or not you want to sign up for my programs. Okay, that's why I like personally webinars. My trigger, launch trigger of choice is webinars. Some people like to do challenges. I don't like challenges because they are challenging. Life is complicated enough, life is challenging enough, and I don't want to challenge people anymore. Okay. Okay, Christian, how you create these PDFs? Uh, for my PDFs, I create them in Google slide and then I just download it as a PDF. That's it. You create a PPT or you create it in Google slide and it'll fit the window. Okay. So have any of you run webinars or challenges or video series before? Have you tried any of these? And do you have questions around them? Now, okay, Christian has run a challenge, yes. Now, when it comes to running challenges, a challenge is a five-day or a 10-day or a 15-day or 20-day program that you lead people through. And the thing with challenges is you, again, have to sustain the energy for that long. A lot of people who run challenges or who promote challenges or teach about challenges, exactly, Dawn says it was too challenging, exactly. Challenges I find personally are challenging for me as a leader or as someone running the challenge. And they're also quite challenging for the people who have to attend them because you're giving them, they have busy schedules and you want them to show up every single day at a certain time and do certain things and take time out of their schedule. And after, after doing that, after working with you for you know, five days is still tolerable, but when you run a 15 day or a 20 day challenge, people drop off, they lose interest, they cannot sustain that energy. And so while you have like 100 people signed up for your challenge, by day 10, you would have probably five or 10 still engaging. And when you announce your course or program at that point, they'd be like, should I just spend 20 days working with you and now you want me to work with you again? And these 20 days were challenging enough and now you're gonna push me even more? 
you get the idea, right? It's not very exciting because they have been challenged so much. But that's my personal take and my experience looking at challenges as a participant and as I have never run a challenge. I always chicken out. Okay. Uh, but yes, there are, that said, there are people who using, uh, there's Zach Buckler and a couple of other people who consistently use challenges as a method for their launch triggers, but then they use small challenges, three or five days. My preferred thing is webinars because it's, we get online over an hour, I share something with you, I share a bit of the, a piece of the puzzle and then I can easily invite you for, the ne for my course as the next step. Simple, right? I don't have to hang in for five days or 10 days or 15 days, etc. Okay, any questions on this stuff? Okay. My recommendation, if you are just starting out and you have not run webinars before or launched a course before, stick to a simple ebook or a PDF. If you are camera shy and feel uncomfortable on a live thing, then do a short video series. Let this be a two or three part video series, short videos, five or 10 minutes each, not more than that. Uh, if you're comfortable with webinars, I think webinars are the best as of now. Challenges, if you're comfortable with showing up online every single day and leading a large group of people, if you believe you can sustain their energy and yours during that five day, 10 day, whatever, then only go for challenges, okay? So that's how to decide which launch trigger to use when and how. Ideally, you want to use one launch trigger at each of these points, cart open, early bird close, cart close. And that is one of the reasons why people run their launches for six weeks, because they can run one webinar at the start, another webinar two weeks later, and a cart close webinar another two weeks later. So they can run these multiple webinars and it gives them time to build up leads between webinars. Personally, I don't like stretching it out that long. Therefore, in this time around, I'm running something new. I'm running this free training series. We still have three webinars, but they are each separated by a two, three day gap in between. It's not a challenge. It's not a boot camp, though we will be doing a lot of work in between. Make sense? Again, I am experimenting. Nothing in the online business world is set in stone. You have to experiment and see what works best for you. I am still experimenting and trying to figure out what's, what will work best for me. I've done single webinars, I've done webinar series, a webinar every week, and now I'm running this kind of series. Questions, anyone about launch triggers? Okay, let's move on. Now, creating these launch triggers is just one step. So you create a webinar but you have to drive traffic to it. You have to tell people about your webinar or your challenge and get them to sign up. That's where the lead generation or marketing comes in. That's where your Facebook posts, your Insta, your LinkedIn, your media experience, all of this stuff comes in. It's to drive traffic back to your launch trigger and get people to sign up there. People think it's just about uh, you know, I'll just announce a webinar and it will happen. I've seen people whose launches were not going well talk about, you know what, I still have another 10 days, let me create a new challenge. It's not about creating a new webinar or a new challenge. It's about dry lead, generating warm leads. Okay. So how effectively can you do that? First thing to do, social media. Most of you are on Facebook. Most of you saw me on Facebook. And my simple tip for you there would to not spread yourself thin through multiple social media channels. Choose one, face, one channel, Facebook, if that's what you're most comfortable with or any other channel, if whatever you are most comfortable with. And publish most of your marketing content there. One social media channel that you use to actively promote your own marketing content. Okay, that's the first point. Second point, how to reach beyond your current audience. That's when you do media appearances. When I say media appearances, can you get published on larger publications like Huffington Post, Elephant Journal? Those are a couple of the common ones that a lot of people know about. But are there other 
people in your domain, in your field, where you can get a guest posting opportunity or get a guest interview opportunity. All of that to drive traffic back to your own launch triggers, your webinar, your challenge, your video series, to get people to sign up for these things. Okay, You use social media, that's Facebook, Insta, etc., media appearances, guest posts, interviews, summits, ads. You use all of those things to drive traffic back and get people to ultimately sign up for this. That's the purpose. So again, it's not about creating more blog posts or more videos or more Facebook posts. It's about creating the right kind of posts that lead people back to your launch trigger. Some of you would remember the structure that I talked about in the content to clients webinar a few weeks ago. How to structure your content to lead back, to go back to your lead magnet or to your launch trigger and so, so that you can leverage it. Questions about this? Okay, what has been your favorite channels? What, is, what have been your favorite channels for marketing? What have you tried and how well did it work for you? And what has been your struggle around that? On Thursday, I will talk more about how to actually write out this content, how to create content for your Facebook, for your uh, blog post, and how to write out your emails, etc. Okay. Now, all of this stuff that you create is called a launch asset. Your sales page, your social media posts, your blog posts, your videos, etc. This is where most people get stuck. That is in creating the launch content. The first part is creating the launch content and then of course, sorry, driving traffic to it. Okay. So this stuff is what we'll talk about next Thursday. Question so far? If not, I will hop over to the workbook and show you what to do or give you assignments to do over the next couple of days. Questions, anyone, about launch strategy, what to use for launch trigger, marketing channels? Okay, let me share my screen. Uh, when I send out the replay mail, I will share with you this Google Doc. This is a very simple doc. It's what I share with my one-on-one -on -one clients to help them get the foundations of their launch right. I want you to fill out these questions as best as you can with as much detail as you can. Today, just work on the foundation. What is, who is your target market? What do they want? What are they feeling right now? Then tomorrow, move over to the second part of this, which is write down your dates, write down the launch dates. When are you going to start doing this stuff? What are you going to use for your launch triggers? What are you going to use for your marketing channels? Write down all of this stuff. And if you have any questions, come join me for my Facebook Live on my Facebook page. Again, the link is here, right? Come and join me for these Facebook Lives. Happy to answer your questions. Happy to help you plan out your launch. Questions, anyone? Okay. Now, as you do this, some of you would feel that you want more support. Okay. Some of you have already launched before or have already tried a couple of launches. Or if you need help getting clear on your target market, getting clear on what they really want versus need, etc. Then I have a very special offer for you guys. It's again, the links are all here on the replay page. Okay. I'm offering 50% off my one on one sessions and the launch bootcamp. So, if you want, some of you would want one on one support, some of you would find that you work better in groups. Personally, I work better in groups, in small groups. So, for those of you who want one-on-one -on -one support, I have two offers. I'm offering a 50% off my launch intensive. I normally charge $397 for this. I'm offering it to you at 
for those of you who book before 24th of September, that's book before Monday or until all spots are filled. Now, this is usually a 60 minute deep dive where I can help you strategize or plan up, review your last launch and plan out your next launch. Clients have found this really, really useful. You can get a feel of what clients say. Under here is a lot of stuff that clients have said. Okay, go read it out. This is the way I help people with their launches. So it's a 50% off a single session. If you want a single session or my preferred way of working one-on-one -on -one with clients is eight weeks of support through their launch. So then I can get in and not just help them plan their launch, but also support them through all of the content creation, reviewing their sales page, reviewing their strategy and helping them through the actual process because there are a lot of decisions you need to make runtime during your launch. So if you'd like eight weeks of support, click here to sign up. It's usually two payments of uh, 1111, but if you book before 20th of September and all spots are not filled, you can get it at two payments of 555. I'm also starting, now some of you may not be ready for one-on-one -on -one support. If that's you if, you, if this is your first launch or your first couple of launches and you know you need to do more work, you require more intensive, more guidance and more support, then check out the launch bootcamp, okay? This is a six week group program where I will help you create all of your launch content, all of your launch assets. You can get the details here. If you click on the link, it'll take you to this page. Where I, give, where I put all details of the program. What is it? It's a six week group implementation program to help you create all of your launch content. It's meant for women solopreneurs who want to support and help in nailing their marketing message and their launch content. What you'll get, this is how we'll roll during these six weeks. Start of every week, I will send out a short video lesson End of every week, we'll have a group coaching call to answer any questions you may have and to review all of your content. Okay. Week one, we'll talk about your foundations, getting clearer about your target market, what they really want, planning out an outline for your course and your launch. Okay. Week two, we'll drill into the details of what should be, how long should you keep cart open, how what should be a launch trigger? If you're doing a webinar, what should that webinar be? And how should you promote it? Week three, we'll craft your sales page. I will not just, like next Monday, I'll be doing this free training on what to write in your sales page and what not. But in this program, in the bootcamp, I won't just tell you what to write. I will sit with you and write it, as in, in the group. I'll review every single sales page and make sure we edit it, make sure we fine tune it. When I work one-on-one -on -one with clients, we often end up rewriting their sales page completely on our calls. Week four will be about creating the promotional material, creating the marketing material for your launch trigger. So if you've decided on doing a webinar or a challenge, right, we will sit and create all of the copy for it. What should go on your landing page, what kind of blog posts to have? How should those blog posts lead to your launch trigger? How should your Facebook posts lead to your launch trigger? What should you have in your email sequences? I will send you short videos explaining how and what to do. And during the week, you go back and create all of this stuff. End of the week on our group coaching call, I will review all of your launch material. Similarly, the next week, we'll focus on creating the marketing material for your actual course or program. This stuff was to promote your webinar or challenge. This stuff will be to promote your actual course, okay? Everything, what kind of stuff should you write in your card open email, what to write in your early bird close email, in your card close email, all of those things. Your 24 hour reminder email and all of this. Remember, all of the stuff that I'm sharing here in this series, is not written in stone, you need to decide which of this stuff you need. For example, if you have a $97 program or course, you don't need a whole lot of elaborate stuff. 
But if you're creating something at the 300, at the 500 or a thousand dollar level, that's when you really need this stuff to fall in place. Okay. Week six, we bring it all together. Till now we were writing this stuff in a Google document. Week six, we all bring it together and put it into the places it belongs. The emails go into your mail service provider like MailChimp, Acuity, et cetera. The Facebook posts we schedule on your page and all of the processes and systems you need, I help you set them up, okay? Now you'll need at least, you need to commit at least five hours each week to watch the lessons, do the work and show up on our group calls. The investment in this is for the early bird price. Okay, the early bird price is till 24th of September, that's Monday. So your investment in this for the early, with the early bird price is two payments of 249 or one payment of 497 only. As compared to my one-on-ones, this is a steal. And honestly, you get much more learning in these sessions because you have the full video series to show you, walk you through step-by-step -step on how to do this stuff. Along with me being there to review your stuff, or review all of your launch assets, review all of your launch content, and answer any questions. Okay, speaking of questions, here's a bunch of most commonly asked questions. You can read through them at leisure. You will have lifetime access to this course material, to all the videos and so on. Though the program is just six weeks, that's six weeks of live support. After the program, you will still have access to all of the video materials and stuff that you've created. Any questions on this? Okay, any questions, feel free to just send me a message, send me a PM or share in the comments. And if you know other people who could benefit from any of this, please go ahead and share the links. For easy reference, all of the links are there on your replay page. Just go check it out. I'll share the video. I'll upload the video for the strategy session here, as well as share the link for your uh, Smart Foundation document. Any question at all, ladies? Okay, anyone wants some feedback about their program or their current launch plan? Uh, one minute, where's my chat box? That's strange, I suddenly can't access the chat box. Okay, so that's all for this session. If you have any questions, please join me on the Facebook Live tomorrow morning. It's going to be uh, 9 a.m. India. Sorry, 9 a.m., not p.m. Ah. It's 4.30 a.m. Britain, 9 a.m. India, 1.30 p.m. Sydney. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining in live. And feel free to reach out if you have any questions about launching. Thanks, everyone. You have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.